Welcome to Old Guy Tech, the OGT.TV recording studio. Technology for the rest of us. 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 Hi, I'm Rob Charney with Old Guy Tech TV, and today we're here with Thomas Fritchie, Heather Charney, and myself. And uh, I want to thank you both for coming in, uh, coming into the studio and joining us today and tell us a little bit about what you got going, Tom. I know Heather has got a whole series of questions. <laughs> she can't wait to nail you with this whole big long list, and it should be a lot of fun, and we're going to have a great, great time with it. So, Heather, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to let you go ahead, and you go ahead, and you start this thing, and okay. you, you ask Tommy questions, okay. and we'll get going. Well, first of all, thank you, Tommy. Oh, for thanks coming. for having me here. I really appreciate it. Um, I want to know, you teach film. Yes. And I want to know, what made you first interested in teaching film? Well, I think it goes all the way back to when I was in college. I took a couple experimental film classes and a couple world cinema classes. And I've always been interested in traveling and storytelling. And I think that really sparked my interest. I uh, actually studied journalism uh, for my bachelor's degree. Mm. And uh, that really got me into t telling stories about people, telling stories about places. And I found through my career as a journalist that even though I had a passion for journalism, I wanted to do more than just tell stories uh, through writing. I right. wanted to tell them visually. Right. That's so great. And can you tell me where you went to school for journalism? Yeah, actually, I went uh, locally at Sacramento State. Okay. They had a really good journalism program. Um, I got to write for the school uh, newspaper, The Hornet. And actually, through my BA there, I got an internship with Capital Public Radio, wow. the NPR station in Sacramento. And I was a producer on a show called Insight for a year. And it really gave me a you know, foundation in media, wow. a foundation for telling mm -hmm. you know, stories locally in the community and also internationally. Too. Well, it's we pretty neat. So you, you got to produce. What, what, you know, you hear about producers, and producers can be anybody from sweeping the floor to doing whatever. Yes. Uh, I'm always interested in that part of it. So what did you do as a producer of this show? Well, that's a great question because um, producing can be anything from, you know, assisting to actually running the show. Right. And when I first started out, I was basically what's known as a researcher. Uh -huh. So I'd research stories, uh, contact possible interviewees, right. um, you know, set up hosts for the show. And um, then as my job kind of progressed, I became more of a handler and a behind the scenes guy during the show. Right. So I would actually get the interviewees ready for their interviews and, uh, you know, really get them comfortable and in the uh, mode for telling their yeah. story. Yeah, yeah, that's that's neat. You know, people don't realize how much work the producer actually is and how important it is in a show. Oh, yeah. You know, sometimes a lot of times they think it's just the guy that comes up with the money. <laughs> they don't realize what's really involved with it, yeah. you know. And yeah, I mean, it's the, same, it's the same with film because without a good producer, the film's not going to happen. Yeah. Right. It doesn't matter how talented your crew is, how talented your cast is, how right. talented the director is. Yeah. Their vision won't come into reality without someone who's managing the lo locations, the crew the money all the important oh things. yeah absolutely absolutely that's really neat so i know i took you off track a little bit but i, no, I that, that's, that's fine. yeah that, that's really neat no that's fine that's a great experience i think producing that yeah. it's probably one of the one of those things that you're going to always use it's going to give you the, those tools that you know that only come to a producer and i think by um i'm not just an npr junkie i like to listen to a lot of different types of media and programs but i think there's two programs in particular that really you know um hit close to home with me when i started listening to npr one was um one was this this american life where it was about people and their experiences you know in america it's a great show and wow. uh you know that really oh, you know great. sparked my interest for yeah. uh and another one is, is fresh air where they interview everyone from writers to politicians to movie producers, mm -hmm. and they really give you kind of the behind the scenes. I remember Martin Scorsese was on there talking about the, the filmmaking process, and it was really interesting to hear him talk. Yeah. That's yeah, cool. I bet. That's cool. You know, that's... Um, what's the gentleman... I'm going to show my ignorance here. Uh, there's a gentleman on, on PBS that does interviews of stars, and it could be any kind of stars. Those oh, yes. Gentlemen. It's like the actor studio. studio. Yeah. Yes. What's, his, what's his name? Because he's, he's always parried, parodied on uh, Saturday Night Live. Right. Right. Yes. Right. Right. yes. Well, he's like 80 years old and has jet brown hair. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you know, yeah. one of those things. But I'll tell you what, his I love watching his interviews because he has a way of drawing things out he does. of people. Yeah. And yeah. He's very laid back. Very, you know, very. I don't even know what the word is, but he's very uppity. I mean, he's very. He's got you know, charisma. Yeah, very good. He's very good with it, and he's very good with his audience. So that that one always got my name. Yeah, you know, and that's a hard thing now. Um, 
with a host, I think you have to have the combination of being able to listen very well, but at the same time, make your audience and your um, guests engaged mm -hmm. to share what they normally wouldn't share um, to exactly. pull that good material out. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. so true. It is. It is because it is difficult uh, to get people to open up a lot of times, especially, you know, if they're not comfortable in front of a camera or, mm -hmm. you know, or whatever it may be, you, try, you know, you need to make them comfortable. So. Definitely. Yeah. That's cool. Definitely. So, Tommy, you teach at the Art Institute of Sacramento. Yeah, actually, it's a it's a national school. It's okay. the it's called the Art Institutes. Um, we have eight campuses in in California. Wow. And uh, most of them are down south, but we have a couple up here in Northern California. Mm -hmm. And the Sacramento campus opened up just about four years ago. Mm -hmm. And I was really uh, fortunate. I came back from film school in Britain, and we'll talk about that in yeah. a bit. Yeah. Um, and I saw a commercial on TV. It's very kind of a cheesy commercial mm -hmm. promoting the Art Institute. So I thought, heck, I might as well contact these guys, see if they need instructors. And it was serendipity. It was uh, great timing. They were just getting their faculty together. And uh, I was also uh, doing a few odd jobs here and there and came back from Britain and needed to find a job. And uh, it was a really good fit because I think for me, what I'm most interested in is, and being a producer as well, I'm interested in making, you know, dreams into reality. That's really and, cool. And uh, without the proper skills of not only business. Um, it's something I probably, if I had to go back in time, I would have studied business. Mm. Um, I think film is 80% business. People don't realize that. Yeah. And 20% actual creativity. Yeah. And mm. I think that 80% of the paperwork and all the um, logistics makes that 20%, you know, work and that 20% is worth it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So let's go back a little bit and talk about your education in Britain. Okay. Well, I was really fortunate. Um, after I did my um, internship and then later uh, my position as a producer at the Sacramento NPR station, I had the chance to go to film school in Britain. They have this really interesting uh, one year master's program. Mm. And so, you know, I was working full time uh, doing public relations for mm. a health clinic. And uh, even though I love the job and I loved, uh, you know, what the job did for people at the same time, I wasn't fulfilled, you know, with my creative passion. And so it was really my time to go and fulfill my passion, um, make the projects that I had into works come into fruition. Yeah. I met a bunch of people from all of the all over the world and was able to actually go and film a short film in Eastern Europe and go back to where I'd lived wow. uh, 10 years before that. Wow. Well, tell me about that. Tell me about that film in Eastern Europe. Well, actually, I was working on this short story um, while I was at NPR. And it was a short story about um, Lee Harvey Oswald and his time in uh, the former Soviet Union. And so I was really interested in this story because um, it not only uh, was a reflection of what my experience was when I went to live in the former Soviet Union, mm. but I had no idea that Lee Harvey Oswald had actually lived uh, two doors down from where I'd lived 10 years before. Wow. wow. So yeah. it, was, it was a story about you know me going back and revisiting my time there and a story about, you know, this young infamous assassin that yes. we've, we've heard about. Well, I personally have seen the film and it's incredible. So I have to tell you. Oh, thank you. It's a really great film. Well, you know, and the funny thing about the film, I think it's a good story. And I always tell this story to my students is I had this huge, um, big, you know, 30, 40 minute film planned. Yeah. And um, in reality, it came out to a 10 minute short. Um, you know, there's always what you have dreamed and envisioned, right. and then there's the final product. And actually, by making that shorter film, it opened me up to um, get the film on PBS in New York City because they had a call yes. for shorts. Mm -hmm. And it was a 10-minute piece, so they wouldn't have probably been able to show my fo a 40-minute piece, but the 10-minute piece worked really well. And also, I got it in a few film festivals, one in Ireland, uh, one in Germany, and then uh, one here in New York. It's so great. Yeah, that's awesome. And that's awesome. if I remember correctly, you could um, vote on the film. Yes. And the vote was uh, to get it actually on a prime time. And unfortunately, right. I was second to another film, so it didn't go on prime time. But I was really just honored to, you know, yeah. be part of that whole process and to get my film aired on the PBS station in uh, New York City. Oh, that's cool. But second, yeah. that's incredible. Yeah. 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 I mean, when you think about it. Yeah. Well, it was second out of third, but we, we'll, we'll forget I that, said that's that. Okay. That's okay. <laughs> Still doesn't okay. matter. <laughs> second out of third. <laughs> 
Um, so one of my questions about the Art Institute is what is the curriculum like in comparison to, say, a state college? You know, that's a really great question. Um, I tell my students, um, and actually prospective students, before they come in, I'll say that this is not a cheap school. It's very expensive. Um, when you compare it to other film schools, it's mm. actually comparable. Mm. But when you compare it to a state college, it could be 10 times more expensive. Mm. Um, depending upon, you know, where you're living and the tuition and all that kind of thing. Right. So it's a huge commitment. But at the same time, uh, what you'll get at the Art Institute compared to what you'll get at a state college is a phenomenal in the difference. Mm -hmm. For instance, I have classes with five students. Right. Um, you know, at state college, I might have classes with 50 right, or yeah. 500 in right. some cases for some of the lower division stuff. Right. So, you know, you get great one-on-one -on -one training and the equipment is phenomenal. It's all industry standard stuff. And actually, why they're going to school there, they get a chance to produce projects for real world clients. Really? Uh, yeah, we just had a class where um, they were working with this education foundation um, called Composers in Schools. Mm -hmm. And it's this um, foundation where com big time composers will come to a local high schools and they'll create a world premiere for them to perform. And my wow. students went out and filmed the world premiere and wow. filmed the rehearsals and we made some promos for their agency. And so they got to do this real world project. And also, too, this great foundation, this great cause, was able to get, you know, something for free that would have cost them five or six thousand oh, dollars in yeah. the real world. Yeah. But the experience for my students, even though they didn't get paid for it, is they could go out and do the same thing and do it professionally. Right. right. And that's right. the difference between someone who goes out and buys a two thousand dollar camera. It's the same camera my students are using. Right. But right. knowing how to use it, knowing how to all the business things, creating yep. invoices, uh, yeah. you know, lighting, all the things that make fine art different from someone who hasn't studied art. Right. That's that's what you get. Oh yeah. That's great. Yeah. And no, if I didn't, good stuff. Yeah. I'm sorry. If I didn't know any better, I would say the success rate of one of your students getting a job is better than say a state college because they get a better targeted. Um, education. Yeah. Well, we've only been around for four years. Um, we've had 20 graduates in film so far, and 18 have jobs. 15 have full time jobs, and the ones that don't have full time jobs are doing freelance work. Wow. So it's it's an amazing you know opportunity for them to get placed. We have a couple students with the River Cats, uh, filming the wow, games and great. you know doing their webcast. We have a couple students with Fox 40 that are actually out there, you know, in the field yeah. producing uh, news and actually in the studio filming the newscasts. Uh -huh. So, and we have uh, students at Channel 3 that have got jobs there, students at a small uh, media conglomerate called M Entertainment. It's uh, based in New York, but they're out here in Sacramento and they mm -hmm. do event um, producing and that kind of stuff. And I have two students working for them as well. So really, it's it's mostly news in the local area, but we have students that are doing freelance work for Google, for um, agencies. They're doing commercials for businesses, that kind of thing. That's there's really there's cool. so much opportunity now uh, to even a, and we call this old guy tech because I'm this old guy here. Yeah, you know, and I've been in technology for a long time, and you know the the whole thing that we started here, this little studio, and bringing people in to mm -hmm. get the message out. Uh, for people that didn't have the opportunity to, it's, it's been something that's really pretty new. And you know, we're yeah. right, you know, it, it, yeah. people are just learning what this is all about. And uh, we're learning every day. You know, we're working with yes. lighting, we're working with cameras. You know, we're doing everything that you've you've helped these students learn. Well, we're we're kind of scratching our way there. <laughs> you know, but we're having a good time doing it. And what's really neat is it, it's been coming where we've got people coming to us wanting to do this now. Yeah. And uh, and just a real quick example. Um, a politician that I know by the name of Rico Oler, he's yeah. uh, he's um, retired uh, assemblyman and state senator. He, a new district has opened up in California called District Five, and he's going to run for that. First thing he did is came into our studio and let's do an interview. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know, I'm still just learning the buttons here, yeah. and we did this interview, and it's the first thing you see on his website now. Yeah, and and he's a I mean he was a big time politician oh, yeah, at the time, he, and yeah. uh, I mean that guy's a pro. He probably has done thousands oh, of these interviews. Oh, thousands and thousands, and he yeah. had a wonderful time here. And we look forward to having him back. And we're and and I don't mean to make this about us, but what no, 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 no. Your, your point your point was absolutely right. You know, you, you get this experience and you learn this stuff, and then we're, we're the ability to give people who have never had a voice before. Right. Yeah, that's the thing. You yes. know, you're, you're creating an opportunity for those people to have yes. a voice. 
Yeah, and one of the things that we really focus on is even though the jobs right now in the community are in the local news areas and the electronic field production um, media companies that are creating shows like Yard Crashers, um, I think they're called Big Table Productions is the local Sacramento one, and they have a national show. Um, those kind of shows are kind of going to be the future of what we'll see on TV, in, in my perspective, mm -hmm. yeah. because with um, the big studios not controlling, they still control Friday and Saturday night at the right. cinema. But um, independent films are starting to get into Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday nights because the distribution model in Hollywood is changing. Right. And with TV, with Netflix, I, I personally oh, yeah. actually do not have a, um, a connected TV connection. I watch all my TV through Netflix uh -huh. online, yeah. uh -huh. through yeah. the television stations oh, yeah. when, they, when they stream the shows and that kind yeah. of thing. I, you know, I miss the sports. I miss the live sports. And right. I think you'll still need that for Comcast or whoever to do live sports. But um, TV's changing, and yeah. I tell my students that yeah. you guys are really here to, you know, be the new wave of what we're going to see for content online. Right. Because it's really, it's more fractured than it's ever been. Well, you know, what's really neat, and, and, and my son Jonathan kind of got me into this. He, he bought us a Roku box for, for our anniversary, and it's a, it's a neat little thing. We get we get Netflix, we get mm. Crackle, we get, I don't know, we get a number. There's so <laughs> many things there. And one of the things I really love to do is I love looking at the older movie, older movies, movies that were made yes. in the 30s and 40s. Yes. And I'm, I, and yeah. now all of a sudden my brain goes because we're doing this. My brain goes, is, "How do you do that lighting? Where, <laughs> well, did, yes. where did that angle come yeah. from? You know." And I, I, I was watching techniques change throughout the decades. Yeah. I mean, there right. was you're watching the movies in the 30s or the 40s. Everything were tights, you yes. know, everything, and then they they block, you know. And it was it was it's just fascinating me now that right. we're doing this uh -huh. and how they did stuff and uh, yeah and, and are you is in that the type of thing you're teaching the students as well that absolutely yeah um yeah. you know we do actually we do cinematography exercises where they'll recreate a scene from citizen kane and they'll try to recreate rosebud you know, Sorry. You, you rosebud. <laughs> well, you know, I, I always thought my students were doing a scene on rosebud and i thought that to update it to modern standards they should do a skateboard <laughs> called the skateboard. Oh, that's great. Like, oh, yeah. So, you know, and that, and that would be great. But you know, back to your back to your old point though, with with TV changing and opportunities changing, it absolutely is that way. Now, um, anyone can go out there and film their podcast or film their show. But the difference between one that's going to be successful, there's two things. There's audience, and my students, when they make films on their own, they don't think about an audience because um, mm. you know it's not about that. But when you go and great content for an audience you're actually consciously thinking of the audience and you're consciously thinking of your market right and uh, those are the people that are successful yeah. we were talking about the twilight movies uh, earlier before the interview <laughs> yeah. and whether you like it or not they have a huge audience right. oh and, yeah you know, and they're going to be successful even if they do do the harry potter stunt where they're doing two films for the final film <laughs> <laughs> hey if it works for one it'll work for another isn't that the thought but back to those old 30s films um what i really love about the film the films is the lighting and yeah we don't really work in black and white at my school but when mm -hmm. you work in black and white you focus on the tonality of, yep. of the shades mm -hmm. rather oh, than yeah. the color information yes you do and so you know it's and it's, that's why it seems for me that's why it seems like the lighting is so much better in these older movies mm -hmm. because they're doing that they're concentrating on a different area I didn't mean to interrupt you, but that, you know, I, I didn't really realize that until just recently where, you know, I started watching these movies with a different v vision oh, than yeah. I did before. Oh, yeah. And, you know, so that. Well, and speaking of old guy tech, I feel myself to be an old guy when I talk to my <laughs> students because they're always teaching me new things right. that I never knew how to do. And technology is changing so rapidly that, you know, I'm, I'm supposed to be on top of it because I'm teaching them the industry standards. Right. But they always have things that they teach me. And, oh, yeah. But one thing that they never had that we had is uh, we had VHS. And VHS was amazing for us when it came out to oh, be yeah. able to tape and yep. record. Yep. But the quality is so inferior to these, even the streaming digital transfers that we get of those old films. Right. We can now see those old films in their original, not only format, but original, you know, um, screen resolution right. that, you know, you would see at the and, movies. And that clear high def. Yes. You know, the, you know, and when you say high def for me, it's a depth of feel is yeah. what it really yeah. is that you yeah. get now. And, oh yeah, it's. it's and they're beautiful. Oh, they they're are. They're beautiful. And, they are. and it's yeah. so nice to watch those, you know, those old films that are transferred. Some of the films, um, Martin Scorsese is really big on preserving films in the American uh, Film Preservation Society because all the old films right now are starting to decay. Mm -hmm. And you'll see those yeah. little, uh, those little, uh, 
infomercials before the movies where you say, you know, give to the, you know, to, to preserve these old films. And I think they've preserved all the classics, which is great because it's something that our culture is going to want to, right. you know, hang mm -hmm. on to because tomorrow if aliens come down, I'd like them to find a copy of Citizen Kane rather than a Justin Bieber album. <laughs> Amen, brother. Well, well, no kidding. And, you know, it's <laughs> interesting you brought that up because there was a um, program on National Geographic not too long ago about the vaults that are being built for these old mm -hmm. films that are in the salt tunnels. And mm. I can't remember where, but oh, okay. anyway, they, they the have these... The salt caves. Yeah. Yeah, the they, salt they, caves. They build these uh, areas, and the government stores all their top secret stuff there and all these movies the original films yeah. are in here because the humidity is perfect and they're yeah. in these fireproof areas and um so they are trying to get everything into di digital taking these films and doing it because it's the only way it's going to pre preserve it but see that's been one of those problems with technology that people didn't really think about in the beginning in my days is you know we were producing these computers and we were doing this stuff and then technology with Moore's law you know it keeps changing every year it's it's faster yes. better quicker more yeah. mm -hmm. all of a sudden now uh, if uh, something that I had done on an old five and a half inch floppy if I wanted to see what it was I have no way of seeing it now yeah. and that's the other problem that, that yes. we're facing with the in, in technology world is that as we progress how do we keep that stuff that we did Ten years ago, how do we keep a current and so we can see it now? Yeah, even yeah. the formatting of hard drives, you know, you go back ten years and, you know, a lot of the formatting has changed. Oh, yeah. And yeah. even my students, when they go from Mac to PC, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I there's, there's bonuses and minuses to the Mac and PC thing. But uh, bottom line, the only reason we traditionally work in Mac is because Mac, the formatting, can transfer larger files than the PC formatting can. And that's the one main thing, because on a PC, the normal FAT32 formatting, mm -hmm. you can only transfer uh, four gigabytes of information right. um, in self-contained files, in, unless you special, special, specialize the formatting. Right. And uh, with, with Mac formatting, the journal formatting, you can trans you know you can transfer 20 30 gigabytes sure. 50 gigabytes because that's yeah. all changed now mm -hmm. uh, yes you know with windows 7 yes and, and, and with windows 7 and, it, yeah. and and they they fix that bug so right. you know that's that's one of the things um and also too there really is no difference aside from the operating system um system in the technology yeah it's the same hard drives it's the yep. same memory yep it's everything's yep. the, the same the, it's just the os that makes mm -hmm. the changes mm -hmm. in that yeah and then I was always kind of a, a PC snob, and I, I've changed my mind a little bit, got it, because I own an iPad, I own an iPod, I own, you know, so I do have Apple products, but... Uh, uh, but you have them for the right reasons. That's yeah. that's the thing, is uh, when, when people get an Apple to surf the internet, they're probably paying $500 too much. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I just, it's funny that you said that. I just got, got through reading the uh, autobiography of Steve Jobs that was written here, this mm. and, and it's very interesting. If, you ever get a chance it's it's an interesting read and it made me dislike the man even more <laughs> I hate to say that but he's he was quite a character you know i think all the you know enigmatic uh, figures of cinema of um, movies of technology of war you know that you almost have to be unlikable yeah to get to that <laughs> point. yeah yeah it's true um, it's you know true. because you have to be so specialized and to tell you the truth He's not going to win any awards in heaven for being a nice guy. Yeah, yeah. No. but um, but his products will live on. They will. Yeah, they it, will. it was very interesting to, to to read. He was he was the finest detail. He was so involved with. I mean, he was yeah. such a micromanager. It was yes. unbelievable. I mean, to the curvature of the phone. To uh, I, one part of that book, he talked about the color of, on the signs for the restrooms. Mm -hmm. You know, who would normally care? It's a slate gray <laughs> sign. Yeah, he wanted he a particular color, a particular. You know, I mean, he got that finite even down to that level. And I think that's what made them su successful because he did have some great views as far right. as how he wanted that part done. You know, I had no idea that he was uh, really the money behind Pixar. Yes. In the beginning. Yeah. I right, had right. no idea about that. Right. I, you know, I have misgivings about animation and about, I mean, they do some wonderful work. I don't want to mm -hmm. say anything bad about Pixar. But, um, you know, it's amazing that, you know, he was also a part of that. Too. Yes. And, uh, well, the, the guy that actually wrote the book with Steve said that he was so difficult to work with. Um, 
And I believe it. I mean, well, the things in, that in, you read about Steve Jobs. In is, the beginning, they had some problems. And then I think after a while um, with having this, and I can't remember his name, I'm sorry, uh, having him with around Jobs all the time, Jobs kind of got off the, you know, like it was almost like he wasn't there anymore. Yeah. And he yeah. came back. That's and, right, yeah. the, the CEO in the 80s. I, I forget yeah. his name, too. Yeah, yeah. And it was uh, very interesting. But anyway, so that... that well, it's going to be interesting to see now that Jobs isn't around. Um, it's going to be very interesting to see where, what direction Apple goes into in the next ten years. I think the next two and three years is already programmed out pretty good. Yes. Yeah. But what yeah. you know, where are they going to go? Who's going to have that vision that he had at, at the next level? That's what's going to be interesting to see. Yes. Who's yeah. going to carry the torch? Yep. It might on. be you, Tommy. Uh, I think uh, <laughs> I need to start working out if I'm going to carry that torch. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it, it's really nice to um, you know reference influential people and influential films with my students because a lot of times um, when they go and they take a project on, mm -hmm. they don't realize the uh, the intricate detail that's mm -hmm. involved. Mm -hmm. And I was just watching a western the other day. I'm uh, I like to watch all the new westerns to see if they're any good, and I'm not going to mention the name of the film because I turned it off after ten minutes. Oh. But uh, <laughs> the the characters, there wasn't enough detail in the characters for me to really put my mindset into you know that particular place and time to take right. me back to a western. Yeah. And then I uh, I got sick of it and I started watching an old spaghetti western. Uh, it was uh, the probably the good, bad, and the ugly trilogy films the fourth film uh, called duck you sucker that uh that no one's really ever seen i mean people have seen it but uh, it's not as popular as the good bad and the ugly or fistful of dollars those and were good by even the way. though it's a ridiculous uh piece when you look at it as far as historical reality um just the way that the characters are portrayed takes you into that western world yeah, yeah. and uh, that's what I, what I want my students to strive for Speaking of your students, I believe we have um, a film or two of your students' work. Yeah, apparently you have some show. shorts of their stuff. I do. Like yeah. to I do. I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure how much your audience can take, but uh, <laughs> we'll show you the best of the best. Well, one of okay. the nice things about this is if they want to, they can turn us off. But well, we, we can. That's why I was telling you. Yeah, we'd love to keep it in the 30 minute pot spot. But if we go longer, there's not a problem with that. Yeah. So you know what? This is a good opportunity. Hey, why don't we take a look at uh, uh, yeah. what some of uh, Tommy's students have done, and, and then yeah. we'll get back to finish this. So. Okay, television, let's see some of the stuff. Tommy, those were great. I mean, it was really nice seeing some of the work that your students are doing, and, and uh, this hopefully this is another other opportunity for other people to see what you've got going yeah. uh, on and, and how you're helping these students and where they're going. So thank you very much for sharing those yeah, with us. Thank you, Tommy. Yeah. You're great. welcome. Thank you. Well, one of the things I think that's really important about the experience of you know showcasing one's work is we talked about audience early on and when you don't have an audience that you're creating for you don't really have the direction of where a piece is going to go per se right. but the students one of the cool things about these pieces is a few of them premiered in our film festival that we do every summer mm. uh, it's through the international sacramento film festival mm -hmm. 
and uh, we actually have one day where our students have an entire showcase. And wow. I'm lucky enough that I'm actually the That's programmer great. of the film festival. And the programmer is a lot like what a producer would do on a film. I basically uh, get all the films in, and it goes through a jury, and we pick which ones are going to work for the festival. And my job is to program it into two hours. Wow. And so, you know, we pick the best of the animations, the best of the shorts, the best of the documentaries, and we put them all together into a two-hour program that's going to be for an audience. Yeah. And so the students actually get to see the audience and their participation and when they laugh, when they cry, that's or so when they cringe yeah. uh, during their films. Yeah, absolutely. Are these films also going to be, or are they already on YouTube? Um, you know, some of them are. Um, yeah. Some of them have their own personal websites. Oh, okay. Um, I have mm -hmm. a, a film from a student who just graduated who has actually been, um, he has been entered into about 10 or 15 film festivals, and he's got accepted to five already. Wow. And, That's incredible. Uh, wow, yeah. And That's his, incredible. his short's really great. We're, we're going to watch um, a little more of it later on because uh, I'd like to finish the show with this piece. Okay. Because it's such a compelling piece. Um, but one of the cool things about this student is I gave him a you know research project for his one of his final classes as me, with me. Uh, what I do with my classes is I'm actually really lucky at the Art Institute. I get to see the students right when they start. I teach them basic video production, and I teach them basic editing, and then I get to teach them at the very end when wow. they're finishing their senior projects, which is generally a ten five to ten minute short film or a documentary. Um, that really showcases their professional skill, so they can use that as a calling card when they when they pass oh, yeah. into their. Oh, yeah. And then also, what I do is I teach a portfolio class where they put together a digital portfolio and build a website to present their work That's and great. to present you know themselves as a commodity to potential clients or collaborators. Cool. That, and yeah. so uh, this one student that we're going to finish with his piece, his name's Justin Daly, and he actually just got hired to shoot. A film with uh, Colin Hanks, Tom Hanks' son. Wow. Oh, it's great. a documentary around the Tower Theater. Huh? They've already started filming, and that's he's going to be one of the cinematographers. Oh, wow. On it. What an opportunity. So, Tommy, I, I would I have to say um, from speaking with you that you really are an excellent teacher, and I think your students' work uh, and the success of your students' work really projects that about you. So, well, you know what? Uh, one of the things about teaching is it takes so much out of me that I haven't been able to do my own projects. <laughs> but I'm at the point where I'm I'm starting to write again. I'm starting to you know film. I actually, speaking of old guy tech, I got the um, 35 millimeter owl uh, adapter for the iPhone, so it oh. adapts a 35 millimeter lens to the iPhone. Maybe that'll be a different program. Right, right. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny that you bring that up. One of the uh, one one of the companies that we're doing some work with, uh, we, we were brainstorming last night, and they said, well, why don't we do a course on f using your phone video uh, from your phone and giving people ideas of what they can do with that. I mean, you know, we never gave that a thought. I went, that's not a bad idea. I mean, well, as long as it's not it? dirty, well, it's a it, great it's idea. It's amazing well, you know, yeah. <laughs> the, the resolution on my phone is higher than the resolution of the video cameras I was using in college. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. So, it is amazing, you know, yeah. and they're just getting better and better. So I thought that was pretty novel. I think it's a, it's a great way for people. And, and everybody carries a cell phone with them, and almost yeah. every cell phone has a camera in it now. Yeah. Well, I, don't, I don't know if it was Ansel Adams, but it was a famous photographer, and he said, um, someone asked him, you know, what's your favorite camera to work with? And um, he said, the camera that I have to take the picture with at that time, yeah. when the picture <laughs> happens. Yeah. <Smart>. For instance, <laughs> one of his most famous pictures, uh, the Moonrise over Hernandez, if, if anyone's ever seen that. It's the piece where you see the moon mm -hmm. and all this negative space, yep. and there's this little village cemetery. Mm -hmm. um, he was actually driving on the highway in New Mexico, and he saw this perfect picture, and he had to stop. And it took him about 10 minutes to get on top of his car, and he just got this shot. Oh, and it was something that, you know, so just great. because it was a spur yeah. of the moment. Yeah. Um, I've, I've had that happen before. And, of course, when you see through your eyes, probably it's the best two lenses that you've ever worked with. Right. Anything you're actually going to put onto a camera is not going to be that vibrant. Yeah. But um, I think he got pretty close with that. Well, you know, what's, what's really cool. neat is that I don't think there was one of us that, uh, before the advent of having a, a camera in your phone, when... 
Well, I sure wish I could have take a picture of yes. that. You know, so everybody was now everybody ha pretty much has the opportunity to take that photo. Yes. You know, and um, depending on your skills, I mean, one of the things I, I work with Photoshop a lot, and it's amazing what you can do with some of these photos, and especially if you want to start getting the high def. And mm -hmm. well, and, in the next revolution with uh, light field technology. Yeah. Um, it basically light field technology enables the user to uh, make their own focus point. So mm -hmm. they can choose what's in focus and out of focus that's, in your picture. No, that's great. Uh, th maybe this is for another show. The yeah, light, yeah, yeah. Light field technology yeah, would be great. Yeah, some incredible apps. Well, you know what? We've uh, we've gone over our thirty minute time here. We've done really good, and I know we want to close out the show with the the shirt that uh, you brought for one of your students. And so what we're going to do is we'll close out. We'll let the show yeah. end. But I want to thank you, Tommy, for coming yeah. and joining us here. We'd love to have you back. We'd love uh -huh. to see more material yes, that you're doing. <laughs> yes, yeah. yes. Let we us, have a please. great time. And, you know, uh, hopefully this helps uh, all of us. And uh, yeah. I'm sure looking forward to seeing it and I the finished too. product as well. So thank you again. I appreciate thank you it. Thank so much. Well, yeah. I, I hope that Thanks, next time Tommy. we meet, I'll be showing you some of the work that I'm doing. There you go. I would love there that. There you go. Thank you. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Uh, last couple seconds, anything you want to pitch or say or anything else just to say goodbye? Or um, I just want to say thank you for having me at Old Guy Tech. It's been a great experience. And uh, if any of my students are out there listening, I'll have to uh, let you guys know that um, you guys have done a great job. And I don't think yes. I tell my students enough because yes. as a teacher, you want to be able to tell the students that there's always room for improvement. Mm -hmm. And I, I do often, you know, tell them that things are very good. But I think when you do it too much, it goes to their head a little bit. Yeah. But yeah. I think what's nice is they've shown their work in public and then the public can tell them it's good. And yeah. that's it. There you go. That's perfect. Yeah. Great thank way of ending. You. Well, thank you. And thank you, Heather. Thank and Tom. you. Hey, and this is Rob for Old Guy Tech TV. We look forward to you coming back. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye. -bye. Hello, I'm Justin Daly, the writer-director of On the 25th Hour. Pretty much the creator. <laughs> and uh, I'm Raphael Siegel. Uh, I had a bit part in this movie. Just a small part. But you, yeah, you can't like leave the room or blink or you'll miss it. <laughs> you may miss the whole movie if you blink. <laughs> it's very short. Well, it is a short. That's what it's designed to be. It is. It's a nice clock. Yeah, I actually borrowed that from uh, one of my teachers. Some crap he had in his garage. <laughs> is he like an antiques dealer? <laughs> right. A lot of people ask me where I got these clocks. They're like, oh, where did you get all these nice, beautiful antique clocks? And uh, it's like, yeah, I bought them at Walmart for $5 a piece. <laughs> People are obviously not in the right section of Walmart to see these wonderful clocks that are for sale. <laughs> it's nice to get known for your work. It's nice to have naked bums not try to show you their privates while you're shooting. <laughs> Speaking of which... So yeah, we're filming here downtown uh, Sacramento at this hotel and... Um, I look at my uh, director of photography, Jacob Chance, and he's just taking some video, so I glance around, and uh, to my right is a bum without any pants on or underwear, and he's just staring at us. <laughs> um, I saw everything, everything <laughs> under the moon and stars. Oh my gosh, everything you didn't want to see. By the way, um, I still have crawling on me whatever was in that bed. <laughs> um, Let's clarify something for the people watching, that the exterior of the hotel is actually different from what you're seeing here. This is a different location. Yes, the, the exterior of the hotel was shot downtown Sacramento. The interior was shot in Galt, California. Um, if you're a meth addict, you may know where this place is. If not... If you're a meth addict, you, you definitely know where Galt is. But I like how you said uh, we shot in Galt. <laughs> like you have to kind of accentuate the ugliness of that. It's really ugly. Hi, this is Rob Charney with Old Guy Tech TV, and I want to talk to you today about Windfall. Windfall has two outstanding offers for you to take advantage of. They have their 12-week business-only ad for just $60. That's just $5 a week. You're not going to find a better deal anywhere. Windfall has a rewards program like no other, a real windfall. Give us five and your ad is free. So refer five people or businesses and you get your ad for free. Visit Windfall on the web at www.shopthewindfall.com or call 530-621-1698. Everybody needs a Windfall. Thank you, Windfall. See you soon.